Welcome in my Microsoft Massive developers, architects, engineers, enthusiasts. We who are about to code salute you. We've got a great show for you today where we'll be demystifying transitive routing in Azure. But before we get going, a message. A lot of subscribers have been asking me what software I use for my presentations. The quick and easy answer is that it's software that we built here at ThinkMind called Scribecast. We'll be publishing it to the Windows Store very soon, and then you'll be able to get your hands on it and play around. Send me an email if you'd like to be a part of the beta program and get your hands on the bits. Now, on to the video. Now, as a baseline, we're first going to create the uh, virtual networks. We're going to peer the networks. We're going to create VMs and put them in the networks. And then we're going to create something called a bastion host. Now, in the cheap way, uh, we're going to be uh, setting up uh, IP forwarding in the registry for our for one of the servers. Uh, we're going to then enable port forwarding on that server. We're going to create uh, UDRs that point to that server. That server is essentially going to serve the function of something called a network virtual appliance or NVA. So we're going to do that. And then we will do a ping test and trace route to ensure that everything is all working properly. So with that said, let's get going. So we're just going to call this VNet A, keep it in East. We're going to enable a bastion here. We're not going to be setting up a firewall or anything for that. Now what's happening here is that for this network virtual network, you need to pick the IP address that you want the network to use. Um, so I'm going to be using 0.5 here. So I'm just going to set that to 0.5. So we've now created the two subnets that we need. So we can review and create it. Okay, so that's done creating. So let's go ahead and let's create the next virtual network. Okay, so we can go next. And we're going to see that we have to do the same thing here. This time we're going to use just six. And then we can just create it. And now we can do our last one, which is VNet C. So let's put it in the same resource group. Um, and that's all set up for seven. So I just create that. And we are all set. So we can see that we have the resources that we need uh, created now. So let's go ahead and let's peer these resources to each other. Again, peering allows for one network to be able to communicate with another. And there are some important things uh, to know here. One of them is this pairing right here. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller that and change it to green. So this pairing right here, these two items. So the first one is allow VNet A to access peered um, virtual network. Of course, we know we want that. That's what peering means. It connects them together. The second one is allow VNet A to receive forwarded traffic from the peered network. That means that um, that if VNet B, which I'm going to be peering to, sends a message to VNet A that was forwarded, if you don't check this, it will not allow that. And the same thing applies between VNet A and the other VNet that we're going to be communicating with, which is VNet B. So this is just a connection between A and B. And then we're also going to do a connection from B to A. And we're going to pick the network we want that we're connecting to. We're connecting to B. And of course, we're going to allow um, them to uh, do the forwarding of traffic. Now we're going to do the same thing with VNet C. B to C is what we're going to be connecting it to. And of course, we're going to be connecting to B. So they both are connecting to B. And we want to allow B to be able to forward traffic. 
So now that we have the virtual networks peered, let's go ahead and let's create the virtual machines that are going to sit inside of the networks. So it looks like that's done and we have all our VMs created. So why don't we go ahead and let's actually um, connect uh, to this VM. So we'll start with VM A. We're going to use the Bastion. So we're going to use ThinkMind. Enter our password. All right, so let's go ahead and let's create um, a connection to VNet B. And then finally, we'll create a connection to VNet C. So we start by going to the Windows Defender on VMA. And we're just going to disable public. Um, or private access. We're eventually going to disable public access as well. But for now, I just want to show you how this all works. And we're going to go to VNet B, and we're going to do the same thing. Turn off private. Now we go to VNet C. And... We can also disable that. Now we can open PowerShell up and we can start doing our testing. So I'm just opening it in each of the VMs so that we have our environment set up. Now let's look at what the IP address of each one of these is, what's actually registered as the IP address. So we have 6.4, we have 5.4, 6.4, and this should be 7.4. So let's try pinging the actual VNet. As you can see, the request is timing out. Why is it doing that? Look at our peerings. Of course, we first of all want to allow the forwarded traffic. Even though that doesn't apply right now, um, we're just going back and adding it because that's actually needed. And in here, we'll also check that because that absolutely is needed to forward the traffic. So the reason this is happening is because we also have to disable this. So we'll go back here and basically disable it as well. Go to the second one, disable it. And now if I actually do a ping, as you can see, it all gets through absolutely fine. And then of course, do this final one for VNet C, and we should be good. So from VNet C, can we ping VNet B? Yes, we can as well. And from VNet B, can we get to VNet A? Yes, we can. And can we get to VNet C? Yes, we also can. We have to go into the registry of your Windows box. Um, and we're going to go to 
local machine system current control set and then we're looking for services and in there, we're just going to scroll down to TCP IP. Here we go. And then we're going to go in parameters. So what we're looking at then when we get here is this guy right here, IP enable router. So this essentially turns your Windows machine into a router and allows it to forward traffic along. So we set that to one to enable it. And after we do that, we need to uh, restart the machine. Let's go ahead and let's create a user defined route. So they're called route tables. So we're going to create one. Click on create. So this is going to route everything in A that matches that thing to B. Remember, it's not routing to the end destination. It's routing to your MVA or your middle server, right? It's routing to server B. That's where you want it to go. Now that the resource is created, let's go into the resource and we'll go over to the subnets and we're going to link it to uh, the default subnet of VNet A. And that's done. Now we're going to go into the routes. And we're basically going to create one. And let's look at all these things here. So this is superfluous right here, the route name. It doesn't really matter. Uh, you know, call it whatever makes sense to you right here. The destination type here, you're picking whether or not you want it to be an IP address or uh, there are some service tags and things like that. Like you can just say, hey, route to internet and things like that. Um, you, here over here is your next hop type. So the next hop type, again, you're going to specify what do you want the next hop to be. In this case, we want the next hop to be a virtual appliance. Anything that matches the IP address or CIDR range that we're going to be specifying in a second, once we pick that we're looking for IP, um, will be sent to whatever address you specify here, whatever server that you specify here. So we'll give it a name. And destination type. And so you can see that once I picked that the destination type was IP address, now I'm now seeing the destination IP. So in this case, the destination would be 10.0.7.4 if I'm on uh, VM A, because that's where I'm going. That's where it's headed. So as you can see, I've entered in uh, 10.0.7.0 slash 28. So I'm saying that all 16 addresses going to that specific subnet address range, I want them routed to whatever is here, whatever is this place. And of course, you're going to see uh, that we're going to put in the that six IP address there. So you can put that in. All right, all set. Let's go ahead and let's add it. So now that we have that set up, let's go ahead and let's test it. If we do trace route to that address, you should see now that, uh, yep, there you have it. It's actually showing uh, the the IP address of the MVH. So now let's go ahead and let's go into VMB um, and let's add some of the rules that we need. So we're going to be opening up the Windows firewall. Let's just close this. And let's open up Windows Defender firewall. 
And then we're going to go to advanced. And then you should see here uh, two kinds of things. There's inbound ports and there's outbound ports. Uh, so inbound ports, uh, as name implies, handles what kind of traffic you want uh, coming in. Uh, you can control that from here. Outbound ports uh, handle what kind of traffic you want leaving. For you to have a full network circuit, for you to be able to send a message somewhere and have the message come back like ping or trace route, all the servers along the way have to be open. So that means that not only do we have to enable inbound and outbound ports, but we also have to go over to the portal and create another uh, user-defined route or route table that handles traffic coming uh, from the other direction. So over here, we basically just create a new rule. Um, we want it to be all ports and just allow all connections for now. Just call it forward all. Okay, so now let's create another uh, route table. Uh, this one for the messages coming from uh, VNet C to VNet B, so the other end of it. Um, as per our discussion, uh, this would basically be needed for us to be able to complete a full circuit to be able to do the both the trace route and the ping. And then let's create a route. And in this case, the route is basically going to be the opposite end. So it's all the same. But now the traffic we're looking for is traffic that is destined for 10.0.5.4. So anything that's going to this address, we want it forwarded to 10.0.6.4, which is our MVA. So although we've enabled the port forwarding through the firewall on the VM itself, we've actually gone into the VM and changed it in the operating system, we have not done it at the cloud plane, which is meaning we have not done it in Azure. So you'll notice that in Azure, we have these items here, right? These are the actual NICs associated with the VMs that we're working with. And what we're going to have to do on the NIC for VMB is we have to enable port forwarding on it. So we can click in there. Working. So we go to IP configurations. And then right there, you should see your ability to set the port forwarding. So we can save that. The final thing you need to do now is you need to go in and modify the outbound rules. So, so far we created the inbound rules and we created a, a rule that allowed for all traffic to go in, but we did not create a rule to allow for traffic to leave as specified. So let's go in and let's add that as well. And same thing, port, and we want all, and then we want to allow all. So you see how it blocks the connection by default? Let me just say forward all. Let's use a dash. There you go. And now, as you can see, uh, when I do a ping, it's going through directly to it. And a trace route is also working from VNet C, no problemo. And does the ping work the same? Yes, the ping works the same. So we work through the baseline, we created a network, we peer the network, 
We created VMs. We set up bastions. And then we worked on the cheap way, right? We set up IP forwarding in the registry on a VMB. We enabled port forwarding for any any in Windows Firewall. We created a UDR. And additionally, not mentioned here, but I'll just write it in. We enabled IP forwarding on the NIC card. And then we also obviously did a ping test. And as you saw, we're able to ping back and forth with no issue. That's basically it, guys. Setting up an NVA and doing transitive routing is relatively straightforward, no matter how intimidating it seems. If you follow the steps in this video, you'll have no problems doing it for cloud native networks. Now, when we start talking about connecting between your on-prem environment and your cloud environment, it gets a little bit more sophisticated because now you're talking about BGP and other protocols that are used to advertise routes into your Azure network. That's a story for another day. And if you have those kind of problems, then you have my contact information below. Reach out to me. Let's talk about it. Let's see what we can do. Thank you for watching all the way to the end. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, subscribe. We'll be having another giveaway. We're giving away another Lenovo Yoga Book 9i. We're giving away a Pixel Fold, a Pixel Fold. And we have all kinds of cool charge keys that we're going to be giving away uh, to all our loyal subscribers. All you need to do to be eligible is to send your comments to me on X, on email, or on LinkedIn, and be an active participant in the community by responding to polls that we provide and turning on alerts so that you can always get our content when it becomes available. Till our next video, happy coding and have a blessed day.